good morning, or depending when you're watching this, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. My name is Ross, and as always told, I had a voice radio. So today, we're going to look at the best uses for counter energy. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. This is a counter energy kind of video. Now, Counter Energy is one of the most exciting new cards that's come out for a little while. It says that it is two of any kind of energy, as long as it is attached to a non-EX, non-GX Pokemon, and you're behind on prizes. Now, Rainbow Energy has seen a lot of play throughout the years. That is only one kind of energy, and you take a damage counter at the same time. This is two kinds of energy... And you don't take a damage counter. Like I say, it has to be a non-EX, non-GX. You have to be behind on prizes. But even so, there is a lot of potential here. And inspired by a question for the bonus podcast over at my Patreon, patreon.com slash ptcgradio, I thought it would be fun to make a video about some of the best uses for counter energy. I am not saying this is going to be every single use for counter energy ever. If you've got any other uses, that, ladies and gentlemen, is what the comment section is there for. And if I need to make a sequel to this video, I will do so. So let's start off with some weird Pokemon that may or may not actually end up being good. Let's start off with Absol. Absol is a very interesting Pokemon. Now, I do, of course, mean the one from Guardians Rising, the one with Doom News for essentially one counter energy. Put all energy attached to this Pokemon into your hand. That's really nice because it means you keep your counter energy ready to use again. At the end of your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon will be knocked out. Now, I really like the way this doesn't do any damage, because if it did damage, then your opponent would be able to use Ace Roller to pick up that damaged Pokemon and save it. They can't, because you're not doing any damage, unless there's already damage on there, I suppose. But they can still use something like a Guzma, for instance, which would be kind of annoying, or they could just retreat, maybe with a Floatstone, maybe manually. There's plenty of Pokemon out there like Buzzwall that have quite a high retreat cost and often don't have much energy on them. Maybe this will work, but if your opponent can get out the active, then they're fine. And that's probably the biggest issue using Absol here. Sorry about that. How about Spiritomb? Now, Spiritomb's a weird one that is about to be replaced by something a lot better. So if we look at Spiritomb, it's got an attack for one counter energy. You will also notice here the Pokemon I really like are basic Pokemon. So you can drop them as a surprise. Basic Pokemon, one counter energy, so you can just drop it and use it. You don't give your opponent time to prepare. More than a counter energy, they can prepare. Stage one, they can prepare. But a basic Pokemon for one energy can be dropped as a complete surprise. So it's got the attack damage play. Move as many damage counters on your opponent's bench Pokemon as you like to any of your opponent's other Pokemon in any way that you like. You just get to move damage counters around your opponent's Pokemon. Now, if you've used something like a Black Ray GX on an Necrozma and put four, five, six hundred damage counters on the field, Black Ray puts a hundred on each of your opponent's EXs or GXs, then this will be amazing. But even if not, if there's a bunch of damage on your opponent's side of the field, this could really work. Biggest downside for Spiritomb, Tapu Lele. Now, the Psychic one was supposed to come out as a promo. We still haven't got it. But the Fairy version is coming in Ultra Prism. That is confirmed. So we've at least got the Fairy version. Counter Energy, and it's a similar kind of attack, except you've got more HP... And you can move them off of the active. Looking at Spiritomb, you can only move damage from the benched. And then you can move it anywhere, even to the active. Whereas Tapu Lele can just move damage from the active, which Spiritomb doesn't do. This is going to see some play. Maybe the Fairy version sees some play with Gardevoir. That could work. Maybe the Psychic version sees some play with Metagross. That could work. But with a counter energy, this becomes a really interesting Pokemon that I think deserves a look. And then, of course, we've got Mimikyu. I like Mimikyu. Now, all of these Pokemon so far, you're not really hitting for weakness. You're just using weird attacks that could be useful. Mimikyu allows you to copy the last attack your opponent used as long as it wasn't a GX attack. So let's take something like a Tapu Bulu, for instance. Tapu Bulu uses Nature's Judgment. Whether they discard the energy or not is irrelevant. Even if they didn't, you can. 
Then you get to come up, use nature's judgment, discard that counter energy, then you're doing 180, getting a one-hit KO on a two-prize Tapu Bulu with a single prize Mimikyu. There is a lot to like here. If Gardevoir's got a lot of energy on it, Mimikyu could come up and actually copy Infinite Force to maybe get a KO on Gardevoir. It's one of those Pokemon that could be good in many different situations, and you never quite know where those situations are when it's good. It's such a fun Pokemon, it's got to get itself a little bit of a mention. Now, Cabalion's an odd one, because the Pokemon I've been looking at previously aren't necessarily hitting for weakness, although Mimikyu could, but Cabalion, it can hit for weakness, and it's very good at hitting for weakness, but it's also really good in and of itself. So for one counter energy, 30 damage, plus 30 more for each prize card your opponent has taken. So let's say a Gardevoir takes two prizes. With a choice band, you're then now hitting 120, 240 with weakness, getting a KO. Yay! But let's say your opponent playing any deck, let's say a Zoroark deck, has taken five prizes. Well, now all of a sudden, you're hitting for 180, 150, plus the 30 base. Now you add a choice band on, and you are doing 210, getting a one-hit KO on that Zoroark, or getting a one-hit KO on a Golisopod, for instance. Cabalion is really good as a metal-type attacker, but it's also just plain good as a big, beefy, walloping, last-gasp attacker. And this is one of the ones that really has seen play with counter-energy up to now. Now, if you want a Pokemon that just hits for a fighting weakness, <coughs> Zoroark, then you can use the Persimian from Burning Shadows with one of my favorite attack names in the entire game, Intentional Grounding. 90 damage, but only if you discard a Pokemon tool from your hand, which I'm not loving. But with a choice badge, you are getting a one-hit KO on Zoroark for one energy. So I am absolutely fine with this. Love the attack name, love the amount of damage. Don't like that you've got to discard a tool from your hand. That really hurts. But for the time being, we have a better version of Persimian, it's the Sudowoodoo from Breakpoint, which for one counter energy, and again, these are all basic Pokemon, copy the attack your opponent used last turn. Well, if we go back to Zoroark, and really, if we're playing a fighting Pokemon at the moment, we're probably trying to KO Zoroark, they do an attack that does 20 damage for each Pokemon on their side of the field. And then as long as you've got six Pokemon on your side of the field, you do 120, 240 without using anything like a choice band, getting a one-hit KO. Or look at something like a Silvalli, the other really good fighting weak Pokemon that we've got at the moment. That does 120. So if you copy that, then you just get to go nuts and life is fun. You get a one-hit KO. Nice times. Now, unlike Mimikyu, you can copy a GX attack with Watch and Learn. Now, this is because it came out in Breakpoint and this was before GX attacks were a thing, but I don't care. There hasn't been an errata. So if your opponent was to use something like Silvalli GX's GX attack, I should mention Lycanroc has the same one, then in you come, and you're getting a one-hit KO potentially on anything. Just remember, if you copy a GX attack, you also copy the you cannot use more than one per game. So you can only use this if you haven't copied a GX attack. If you have, it wouldn't work. And actually, one more great use for this. How about Boswell? If Boswell uses Knuckle Impact, you can come in with a Choice Band and Knuckle Impact for 190 and a KO. Sudowoodoo is a lot better than Persimian, and I ain't pretending it isn't. But Sudowoodoo is going to rotate in September, and Persimian isn't, so, you know, something to watch out for. And the last one for this particular video, if you want a water-type attacker, let's say you're trying to take down a Volcanion, or you're trying to take down a Turtonator, for instance, might I suggest... The Keldeo from Shining Legends. Now, I've been saying since it was first revealed that along with Aqua Patch, this makes it a really good non-GX attacker in a water deck. 
But with a counter energy, it's a water attacker in any deck, and it's still a non-GX. Has to be to use counter energy. 20 damage plus 20 more for each of your opponent's bench. That's great. Volcanian decks tend to use quite a lot of bench spaces. They fill their bench, in comes Caldeo, and you get quite an easy KO here. If they've got four bench Pokemon, then you're hitting for 100. But then, of course, that becomes 200 with a weakness, and you get a fairly easy one-hit KO. That's pretty gosh darn good. If they've got two bench Pokemon, you're hitting for 60. With a choice band, you're hitting for 90, and you do KO Volcanion, but not Turtonator. Again, all of these Pokemon, you've got to be behind on prizes to use the counter energy. Otherwise, it's just one colorless energy. But you can see how many options you've got. There is absolutely potential here to play a low energy attacker, maybe something like a Garboda, and then just play a sweet of counter energy attackers if you're ahead on prizes brilliant if you're behind on prizes in you come with counter energy and you've always got something like bridget to search all of these out in one go also consider energy lotto to search out counter energy and special charge to recover it in the mid to late game i think counter energy's got a lot of potential and i hope that by showing these pokemon in this video i have proven it but as always ladies and gentlemen tell me i'm wrong Tell me what other Pokemon you think can use counter energy. If there's enough, I'll make another video. Have you experimented with it? Tell me about your successes and your failures if you wish to do so. Go nuts! Be nice! Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, and Twitch for some live action at twitch.tv slash ptcgradio. If you want to support the channel, get some bonus pods and so on, you can do so by going to patreon.com slash PTCG Radio, and please check out my video game channel, Wossy Plays, for some video game action. But by far, the most important thing as always, is to look after yourselves until next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching PTCG Radio.